What is a container? At the end of the day, a container is just an isolated process or kind of sandbox environment that's running an application on, on your machine. In many ways, you can think of it a lot like the apps on your phone. When I install application A on my phone, I know that it's only installing the things that the developer for application A packaged up with that, that application. Well, when I install application B, same thing. And when I run app A, it's not influenced or affected by what's on app B and vice versa. If I delete one app, it's not gonna affect the other app and vice versa. Containers work much the same way, just that we're running different types of applications. Instead of phone apps, we might be running databases or message queues or web servers or a variety of different things. So to do a couple of little demos here, this first demo, I've got a, a Docker run command in which we're specifying dash P to break through a little bit of the network isolation that's there. But when I run this, I don't have Nginx installed on my machine and just within a, a, a second, now if I open up my, my browser, I can see the welcome to Nginx page. And that's because again, it's running this containerized environment. As a second demo here, I have a Docker run command that's providing a couple environment variables to bootstrap and get a MySQL database started. In this case, I'm using version 8.3.0. When I run this, within a couple seconds, I have MySQL up and running. But imagine if I had to switch to another project that needs a different version of MySQL. Normally, this would be pretty complicated to do if I were installing everything directly on my machine. But with containers, that's not a problem because each of these are going to run in their own isolated sandbox environment. And within just a couple seconds, now it's up and running. Now, now, why might I want to use containers? Well, I can start to piece them together and connect them in a, a variety of different ways. And so as another demo here, I've got an application that is composed of five different services. I've got a, a web app that is written in Python that allows me to vote, in this case, cats or dogs. And that vote is put into a Redis queue where on the other end of that, there's a worker that's written in .NET that reads the votes and stores them into a Postgres database. On the other end of that database is then a results web app that lets me see the results. Now, we're not going to get into much of how it's all defined and everything, but using a tool called Docker Compose, I can quickly define these containerized environments. And within just a couple of seconds, the Python environment is spun up, Redis is running, this .NET container is running, Postgres, all these different services are up and running. And then I can just quickly jump over to my browser and I can see here's the vote app. And I can vote cats or dogs. I'm personally a dogs person, so I will vote for dogs. And then if I go to the results app and refresh the page here, I can see the results have been processed. And if I change my vote back to cats, I could see that it's gone through that entire flow. Now, so why might I want to use containers? Well, again, each of these containers are running in an isolated environment, so I don't have to worry about what else is installed on my machine, if there might be conflicts. I don't have to worry about if part of my team is on Windows or part of my team is on Mac. These containers will run consistently across all those environments. And then finally, I know that everybody's using the same version of things, so it completely eliminates the, well, it worked on my machine problem. So again, think of containers. They're just these isolated environments that are designed to run a specific task. Now that you know about containers, you can find instructions below on how to start and run your first container.